basically, but it will just amplify them. We're moving to a, truly a, a, a multipolar world. I don't know if it's the Asian century, but it's a, it's a century that's no longer the, uh, the United, the American century. And um, we're trying to adjust, and we're in the process of coming close to getting ourselves blown up by our stupidity. So uh, this is a very good occasion to take uh, note, just as events are really heating up in Ukraine, of what to do to pull back from the brink that uh, we're on. We've been uh, at war in Ukraine now for nine years. The war did not start with uh, February 24th. 2022, that's U.S. propaganda. The war started with the overthrow of Ukraine's president, Yanukovych, in which the United States played a major role. And uh, Yanukovych was uh, trying to actually protect Ukraine from exactly what has happened. He was trying to navigate between the U.S. and you on the one side and Russia on the other side, and so his basic policy was neutrality, and in the end, the United States overthrew him, and the war started at that point. Uh, it's funny, we actually even have a tape, of course, of Victoria Newland, who was our Under Secretary of State discussing the post-Yanukovych government with the U.S. ambassador three weeks before the overthrow. And like so much in our world today, it's forgotten in the Western media. We don't talk about any such unpleasant things. We don't discuss any facts. We don't discuss any history. We just make up stories that are Yanukovych was overthrown and a truly Russophobic government was uh, replaced Yanukovych in the United States and Europe immediately, uh, immediately uh, backed the new unconstitutional government because this was part of the, the idea that uh, now we can move forward. What the U.S. wanted to move forward was, and what Europe wanted to move forward was to make sure that Ukraine was pulled into the Western orbit, which unfortunately, because of the U.S., but also European uh, acceptance of this, meant not only the European Union, but also NATO. Now they're the same, uh, almost this is not just an economic alliance or a social grouping or uh, a, even a political grouping. It's now a military alliance. And this is why we're at war, because uh, the United States insisted on pushing its military alliance up to a 2,000-kilometer border with Russia. And for the last 30 years, Russia said, don't do that. And the United States said, nah, don't worry, we're peace-loving. And every step of this military alliance, Russia said, please don't do that. And the United States, don't worry, we're peace-loving. Maybe a war here and there, but nothing for you to worry about. And NATO kept moving, came here in the first wave, next wave was uh, seven more countries under peace-loving George W. Bush, Jr., uh, uh, moving uh, NATO to the Baltic states, to uh, Romania, Bulgaria, Slovenia, Slovakia, and uh, Russia kept saying, stop. You understand? We're really 
is saying you've got to not put your missiles, your uh, aces, your weaponry on our border. And in 2007, of course, uh, President Putin spelled it out very clearly at the Munich Security Conference, maybe we should call it the Munich Insecurity Conference, uh, because he said, this is really, really, you've got to stop it. And uh, our current CIA director, William Burns, in 2008 was the US ambassador to Russia, and he sent a long memo, which I'm sure most of you have seen, in 2008. Like everything in the United States, it was secret, uh, so the public would never get to see it except WikiLeaks leaked it so that we get to read it. Uh, and the title of the memo was, Yet Means Yet. And it explained in very clear language how reckless it would be to move NATO to Ukraine. Because it's not just Putin, it's the entire Russian political system and leadership that says, don't put your military alliance on our border. There. And it's interesting for me that such a memo would never be seen by the Americans except if it's leaked. Because our government hides everything, lies on everything. I'm sorry to tell you, it's unbelievable the propaganda day by day. So Yanukovych was overthrown, the war started, the United States poured in billions of dollars of military armaments, which is what Ukraine is <laughs> fighting with right now. When Biden came in in 2021, Putin said, stop. Biden said, no, we're peace loving. Why should we stop? It's an open door. NATO's open door. The biggest nonsense in the world. The nonsense that can get us blown up. What does an open door military alliance mean when you say, when the other side saying, stop, negotiate, keep some space. It means we do whatever we want. Who are you? And it's actually NATO doctrine that no other country has any say in NATO policy. That's the arrogance that really could get us killed. That's not peacemaking. That's not diplomacy. That is we do what we want and no one else has any say in what we do. So in 2021, three times the United States said, Ukraine will be in NATO. On December 17th, 2021, President Putin put on the table as a last step, a draft US-Russia security agreement which said, no NATO enlargement, let's negotiate. Just as a footnote, I called the White House at the time, spoke to one of our leaders, and said, you know, negotiate. Don't extend NATO. Don't get the world blown up. Don't get Ukraine in the middle of a devastating war. This is a complete trap for Ukraine. This isn't friendly to Ukraine. This is going to make Ukraine like Afghanistan, which is another great U.S. achievement. 20 years of nonstop war, and then you leave the country completely destroyed. So that's what I said. And he said to me, Mr. Sachs, don't worry. But NATO is non-negotiable. So, 
That's why we have a, quote, unprovoked war. And what's interesting also about the war is that the first few weeks quite clearly was Russia using its military to push Ukraine to the negotiating table. Not to take over the country, but to push the negotiations. And Zelensky said about three weeks after February 24th, we don't have to be in NATO, we can have neutrality. And you know what happened then? The Russians immediately said, okay, let's exchange documents, let's negotiate. And Turkey, of course, was mediator, and I've ha had the chance to speak to the negotiators, and they made very good progress. And they actually basically had reached a draft agreement. Stop the war. And then what happened? The United States said no to Ukraine. No agreement. And so suddenly, negotiations ended. And what did we say in the media? Putin doesn't like to negotiate. There's no one to negotiate. This is our propaganda, nonstop. So really, if we aim for peace in Ukraine, we could have it in short order. We could have had it in 2021 without any of this by having NATO not enlarging and the Minsk agreements being honored. Of course, because the Ukrainians did not honor the agreement and the guarantors of the agreement, France and Germany, did not guarantee them, even though the agreements were endorsed by the UN Security Council. So those were the terms in December. I don't know exactly what the terms would be at this point, but this war will stop when Biden stands up and says NATO will not enlarge to Ukraine. And that is the world that we need. Thank you very much.